Hi, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Ripple Therapeutics presentation. So Ripple is a, a Toronto-based company, clinical stage, and we're focused on improving ophthalmic therapeutics. We see a different way of delivering drugs through controllable, sustained drug delivery without the use of polymers or excipients, which we believe leads to better outcomes for patients, easier management of care for physicians, and lower costs for payers. We focus on ophthalmology, both retina and glaucoma, because we see a number of different markets uh, where the standard of care has challenges, whether it be duration of effect, cost, compliance, or what have you. So how are we different? Well, if you look at traditional drug delivery technologies, in one way or another, they all use polymers. And this leads to the same types of issues, large molecular weights, low drug loading, larger implants, diffusion and bulk erosion, which leads to poor drug release and control, and in oftentimes multiple and unpredictable degradation products, which we think leads to both regulatory and CMC challenges. We're different. We figured out a way to develop prodrugs without the use of polymers or excipients, which allows us to have low molecular weights, which leads to high drug loading, no polymers or excipients, which allows for smaller implants, and no acidic degradation products. And the drug delivery is delivered via surface erosion, which gives us both zero-order release kinetics, but it's also highly tunable for both drug release and duration. And because of the simple monomeric structure, it's scalable and low cost. So effectively, we take the API, we conjugate it to a low molecular weight linker, and on its own, this prodrug has no biological activity but it can form into these three-dimensional shapes that you see here. Those are 100% that prodrug. Again, no polymers or excipients. So these dissolve off the surface and then quickly break down into the component parts. So the API then gets to the target tissue and the linker is cleared through the system. Uh, and these allow for that zero-order drug release and it's highly tunable based on chemistry so you can change the underlying API or the underlying uh, linker. And also, because it's surface order uh, release, you can change the actual physics, either the implant itself or the dimensions of the implant. So we have a, a broad ophthalmology portfolio, but as this is the retina focus, I'm gonna focus on IB814, which is our dexamethasone uh, intravitreal implant, which is targeting DME, RVO, and other retina diseases. So our target product profile here is really to address the shortfalls with current therapies for DME and RVO. So it's surface erosion drug release for six to nine months with a 30 gauge implant we deliver a tenth of the drug of the lead program, so 70 micrograms versus Ozodex is 700, which we believe will allow us to reduce the steroid-related IOP and AEs. We've got a full battery of preclinical data, which was published last year in uh, Nature Communications, but this is a summary here. You see on the left the, uh, the PK data, where you see a really nice zero-order release for our product versus the burst release with, with Ozodex in the middle. The pharmacodynamics, we receive one, we don't need a burst release to moderate the edema, and we have sustainability out to six months plus. Whereas Ozodex, you know, it's kind of the 10 to 12 week period, it starts looking on the negative control. And on the right there, you see from the scans and the laser microscopy, full degradation at nine months, which is our target product profile. So what we're excited about is we're now seeing this preclinical data translate to the clinic. So we've just finished enrollment of our Ripple One trial in Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, uh, and Canada. So 60 patients. It's an all-comers trial. You can see here both short duration and long duration for DME and RVO patients. Uh, two different arms, one low dose, uh, which is that single 70 microgram injection, and the high dose is two of those uh, implants. And so we're seeing the ability to treat multiple patients. So this is the CST graphs here. I see both DME and RVO patients, both naive and long treatment. Just highlight a couple of these. The one here on the far left, the woman who was treated for nine years with anti-VEGF therapy and treated well, but coming in every 68 weeks. And you can see in our study that she was able to uh, avoid a retreatment up to eight months and uh, really nice improvement in CST and in vision. And the far right is one of our poster child patients where this patient, naive patient, we saw an improvement in vision from 55 letters to 85. If you look at our RVO data collectively, and most of the early patients were RVO patients, you can see a few, few things. One is you know, no burst release required to moderate the CST. Uh, comparable results between the low dose and high dose, and equivalent reduction in CSP at three months to Ozodex, uh, but much better at six months. So that sustained efficacy, that target six months. 
A lot of the DME data is early, but this is, I think, a real nice indication of the ability to sustain and improve 2040 vision uh, for many of these patients. From a safety point of view, we're not seeing the IOP increases that you traditionally see with intraocular steroids. And because of the fact that uh, both the low dose and high dose efficacy is very similar, that's the product we're gonna move forward with the phase three trials. We have commercial traction. We have a, a commercial deal with TEA for North America and Europe, really attractive financial deal, and they're also funding the phase three trials. And we just recently announced a deal in China with CSP Pharma, again, an attractive financial deal, and they're funding the, uh, the phase three trial. So just with the last minute or so, I want to tell you a little bit about our glaucoma program. So this is RTC-1119, a latanoprost intracameral implant to reliably treat glaucoma and ocular hypertension. I think everybody knows here there's only one product that's approved, sustained release product for, uh, for glaucoma, and that's a Darista product. It's only approved in the U.S. and only approved for one treatment. And I think if you look at the, just the picture on the right, this describes the challenge. Uh, it swells over time. Uh, and when the drug is gone, you still have this carcass. And with the second treatment, you get the stacking, which causes that endothelial cell loss. Whereas ours is smaller, and it shrinks over time. Uh, and when it's gone, when the implant is gone, the drug is gone, and vice versa. So the ability to retreat, we think, is there. We have a real strong uh, preclinical data set. This just shows the safety, both macular exams as well as pachymetry. And the PD data here compared to Darista's uh, preclinical data demonstrates that IOP lowering uh, that they saw at, at 90 days out to, uh, in this case, almost nine months. So our focus right now is on our uh, preclinical work, GLP talks and CMC to get ready for, for our clinical trial. Uh, just a shout out to our advisors, both on the retina side and the glaucoma side. Uh, we rely on their, their advice and support. Uh, and finally, you know, we're looking to raise a 35 to $50 million Series B. The primary use of funds is to fund uh, the glaucoma program through the clinical. So uh, interested in talking to any investors of interest, as well as people looking at their API and wondering if that can work well with our technology. Thank you for your time.